Welcome to the second comparison video here I'm trying on my channel. Today we're going to be comparing the iPhone 7 versus the iPhone 10s Max, and the purpose of this video is to help the more so average consumer decide whether the jump in price is worth the additional features you get with the new generation. So I'm going to be either shrinking or widening the gap between these two devices in comparing their many different aspects, design, display, battery life, camera, and performance. So with that said, without further ado, let's get into this comparison. So first and foremost, starting with design, obviously there are a few key nuances. The most noticeable being this phone is made out of steel and glass, whereas this phone is mostly aluminum. Of course, you have glass on the front. And then the other key nuance is the display design, which we'll get to. Um, but overall, I mean, both are high quality phones regardless. Obviously, this is going to feel a lot more heavy, a lot more premium because, I mean, you're paying like a thousand dollars for this. So it better feel pretty nice. But with this, I mean, even to this day, it's nice. It's solid and doesn't feel cheap by any means. I mean, the layout is the same. I mean, iPhones don't really change much. The design language is very similar, especially on the side edges. And um, same with the flash. I mean, like it's an Apple product. They don't change very frequently. The design language is kind of retained over the years. By the way, this is not my phone. This is my friend Patrick. Shout out to him for letting me use this for this video. Another huge key nuance is the lack of touch ID with the iPhone 10 and 10s Max, and then the existence of it still here. I'd say it's more convenient in a lot of ways, uh, somewhat quicker also. This is the 2.0 Touch ID in here versus the 2.0 Face ID. Both are quick, but obviously this is going to be more convenient in most situations, especially when, you know, you have like a scarf on or like your face is kind of not the quite where it should be because like, let's face it here, Face ID is a newer technology. Touch ID has been a tried and true for a while. and. Yeah, I mean, that is pretty much it with the design. Obviously, this display is more bezeled. And speaking of the display, let's just move on to that. Um, the display on the 10s Max obviously is much, much better. Um, with a OLED panel here, you have almost, I think it's like around 2K. I don't really know quite the resolution. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I do. It's some weird number uh, per usual with Apple. Um, but with the 7 and the 8, it still has this 750p display. It has a decent pixel density, decent colors, but it's nowhere close to what you get with the 10 and and now with the 10s Max. But I, I will say, if you're not super concerned about pixel density and sharpness, both look great for YouTube videos, I would say. Um, both have decent contrast, both have decent color, and you should really have no problem enjoying content on either of these devices. Obviously, it's gonna be a better experience here because you get this really huge display. But also, something that I forgot to mention with the design, I need to turn this ad off. <laughs> The media uh, experience is still great on both these phones, especially considering the fact that this phone retains or introduced uh, stereo speakers. Obviously, they're going to be better and louder on here, more bass, more clarity. But with this, I mean, you still get that stereo sound, and that's a huge deal. I mean, once you move on to a phone with stereo sound, you really can't return to something with a downfiring speaker. It is not a fun experience. But uh, moving back to the display, I would say if you were to compare both and kind of like rate them, obviously this is going to be like a nine or a 10. This is like a solid seven. Um, and I say that because once again, Apple uses great IPS displays. Uh, once again, the color is really decent. The sharpness is also decent. And um, I would say obviously the display on the tennis max is a lot better in many different ways in terms of the color quality, the contrast with the OLED and its overall sharpness. But yeah, I mean, I would say, although people have given the iPhone 7 and 8 a lot of a crap for having a subpar sub 1080p display, it still is great till this day. And I would say the average consumer won't notice it, especially considering the fact that it shares the same pixel density with the kind of sort of popular iPhone 10R. Moving on to battery life, both of these phones are still great. From what I've heard, my friend told me he can get about three to five hours of screen on time with this phone. He never has to charge more than once during the day. Same thing here, it's even better. I get like probably six, maybe even seven hours of screen on time. That's really impressive with the display that is built in here, especially with also the A12 processor, which is, I will say, albeit um, more power uh, sipping than the A, uh, what is it, the A10 Fusion in here, but both are fuel both are fuel efficient. Both phones pack energy efficient chips, and once again, you really won't have a problem uh, making it through the day with these devices, unlike phones like the iPhone 5S, which have really deteriorated battery life. Same with like the 6s, maybe even the 6s, but this phone still is great. The A10 really did introduce um, uh, more fuel, <laughs> more energy efficiency uh, into the iPhone lineup. 
Another key nuance with these phones is that this iPhone 7 is restricted to just wire charging, whereas the iPhone 10 and 10s Max are uh, able to wirelessly charge with the glass back that they rock. It's super convenient, I will say. I mean, like if you're just, you know, like using your phone at night and you don't want to have to get up and plug it in, I have my charging pad right next to my bed. And I just kind of roll over and just plop it right down. It's super, super convenient. Um, it might not be the biggest deal to you if you're just used to plugging in your phone and you don't want to spend money on a uh, third party wireless charger because at this point, Apple doesn't sell one. But once again, it is a nice feature to have. And, um, but I will say it's not worth like paying a huge premium for. So keep that in mind. It's not a huge deal, but it is a nice feature nonetheless. So next up with camera quality, both of these phones rock pretty decent cameras actually, although this one features a single lens, whereas this one features a double lens. If this was the 7 Plus, we'd have a dual lens, so you do not get portrait shots with this, but you do get it with this, uh, because obviously you have a telephoto and your regular wide-angled lens. Both are pretty decent in low light, although I will say the iPhone XS Max will beat it out, because obviously it is a few generations newer, and they have better algorithms and software integrated into this phone. The A12 also also has some features that help with that the kind of stitching images together and whatnot we'll do a test right now because i'm not going to just sit here and act like i use this phone all the time because truthfully i don't but we'll take a photo in some uh pretty decent conditions here so i'm going to take a picture with my 10s max i'm going to take a regular photo photo here so taking a look at both photos here obviously the right image with the 10s max is going to look a little more saturated because of the display but i will say the iphone 7's camera still holds up very well both images are sharp. I would say maybe the colors are a little better on here. Contrast also is probably a little better here. Um, the bokeh is very similar. I, I would say oh, almost exactly the same. Um, what I do notice is that there is less noise here. Um, once again, it's probably better in low light or you know handling shadows in images. So that is something to keep in mind. I would say the image quality is similar in a lot of ways, um, but obviously once again, low light performance has always improved year from year. And since this is a, well, let me see here, a one, two generation jump, you are gonna notice a difference um, with the low light once again. But yeah, overall, I'm impressed. Um, both of the images are sharp especially in well-lit conditions. In terms of video, uh, there are some recording differences. You can record up to 4K60 on this phone, only up to 4K30 here. And I believe on um, this phone can shoot 1080p at 240 FPS. I don't think that the iPhone 7 is capable of that. Let me just check. Yep, see, we are restricted to 1080p at 120 FPS. That's a big deal to you. Um, maybe buy an iPhone 8. Uh, but other than that, not huge differences there in frame rate. So I'm gonna just take a little quick video. So right off the bat, something that I noticed was that the stabilization with the 10s Max is much, much better. Uh, this is a little more shaky. The autofocus is much better here too. The image is also a little more colorful, sharp. I think that Apple is trying to sell you the image a little more, kind of make it sort of like what you get from Samsung and other companies that, you know, all once again, try to oversell the image. This is more of a flat look, but once again, we are comparing these two displays here. One is an OLED, one is an IPS, so keep that in mind. But I will say the camera quality here is still excellent, way better than a lot of phones that I've seen. Even like flagships from a year ago, like I just reviewed the Essential phone and the camera was just kind of eh, with, at least with the stock camera, but I'm still impressed with this, especially considering the fact you can get this phone for as cheap as you can, around three, sometimes $400. I think it's in like the $350 range. Um, and then this phone being $1,000. Would I say that it's worth the jump? I don't know, maybe if, if you're huge into smartphone video, if you're a tech head like me, maybe it's worth the upgrade. I mean, there definitely is a difference in image quality, but is it like a humongous jump? I wouldn't say so just in a few um, aspects. Like once again, I said the autofocus is better, the stabilization is better, maybe the colors and contrasts are a little more poppy out of the box. But other than that, I mean, both have excellent image quality with photos and videos. I will reiterate, you're gonna get better low light, you might get a little more sharpness, a little more color, a little more contrast, but other than that, I mean, iPhone cameras tend to stay the same, sadly, unlike, you know, like Samsung phones where they're really innovating with the cameras. So that is the sad truth of the matter. I, but I will say once again, both sport really, really great cameras for what they are. Uh, quickly going over the front cameras, both are seven megapixels. They haven't really changed much. Uh, obviously you get some portrait features here. I do notice that the image quality is a little cleaner. I don't know, that might just be with software, but you do get face ID right here. So I'll take selfies with both these phones here treasure that forever Patrick okay so let's compare what we got here both nasty pictures of me but it's fine 
it's for science um so this is all you get i mean it's a decent sharp image it's true to life here you get there was some kind of conspiracy not conspiracy some kind of controversy about how apple processes but it i mean this does look nice you get more depth you can like change the background blur so your selfie game is definitely better here you also get control with um uh, different lighting modes and whatnot so it is a nice feature but once again is it worth like the 600 dollars price difference um i wouldn't say so i mean maybe it is to you i wouldn't say so in my case but this is a nice feature to have anyway your selfies are going to look better um especially since apple kind of got rid of that weird like facial smoothing thing which turned out to be um software that tried to increase dynamic range but yeah i mean your selfies are gonna look better i think the lesson learned here is that the image quality with the 10s max is obviously gonna look different from the iphone 7 but you have to ask yourself is that jump in quality worth it to you overall and um my answer is probably not to most people so if you're looking to buy this phone i mean for the camera quality, it's not a bad choice at all. But if you're more particular about your images and videos and whatever, and that extra oomph and quality is worth it to you, then it might be worth picking one of these up. I would say use, maybe getting a 10 too, because the iPhone 10 is not too much different from the 10s Max and 10s. So keep that in mind. Um, so moving on to the final and most important aspect, in my opinion, let's talk performance. Both of these phones feature awesome, awesome chipsets. Uh, the A10 Fusion uh, features two high performance cores and two lower end cores, which will switch. Uh, the phone will switch between them depending on what you're doing. And then this, I believe it's hex core. It's something insane. Uh, it even shreds this. Um, but once again, both are amazing processors and some Android phones even rival the performance you get with this phone. iOS 12 runs on these phones amazingly, obviously with the iPhone XS Max because it's its native uh, version. But even after iOS 10, two versions later, um, this phone is really smooth. The animations are really, really snappy, I would say. Um, no delay at all. But I would say the iPhone 7 impresses me more because it's like two and a half years old. And, um, you know, in the past, iPhones tended to deteriorate a little quicker. Um, but with this phone, with its amazing processor, it has held up really well. Let's launch a couple apps here without exposing my friend here. Um, so let's launch the settings app. So as you can tell, like both are very, very responsive um, for what they are. Um, in most general usage, you're not going to notice a huge difference between the two. Let's launch, um, I'm going to go on LTE for this. Let's launch Spotify. So like not a huge difference in terms of, and like, by the way, like we have different services. So keep that in mind. Both of the apps launched here really quickly. Obviously scrolling is going to be a little more laggy on older phones, but that's to be expected. But you know, like this is going to be butter. This is going to be like almost butter. And that's really acceptable considering, once again, the price of this phone and its age. Let's open a few more apps here. Let's open up YouTube. Once again, really quick, not too much of a delay with the iPhone 7, something acceptable. I mean, I would use this phone if like I broke this and I needed to buy a replacement. Um, let's do some scrolling here. Um, let's open up Amazon. Once again, very similar performance here. Um, not too much of a difference. Um, let's launch the camera. Like very minimal difference here. Once again, we can actually load a site at the same time. Although once again, we don't have the same networks. It's going to be similar. Both are GSM. So even if his service was a little bit slower than mine, still really impressive with loading times. Um, you're not going to have any issue with bandwidth here. Both these phones feature uh, 3D Touch, by the way. It's a little more responsive with the newer phones, but still um, just as tactile and satisfying with the iPhone 7. This is um, this was already one generation old as this feature was introduced with the 6S. Let's do a little multitasking test here. I don't have too many apps open, but um, you know, once again, animations are a little more smooth with the iPhone 10s Max, which is to be expected. But once again, it's still impressive performance here. Let's reload this app. Um, this had to reload a little bit, so then there is more RAM here. I believe there's four gigs of RAM versus the two or three that's in here. I will correct that if I'm wrong. Um, so that is also something to consider, but once again, not too much of a difference there um, with reloading apps. Let's go back into settings if it's still open. Um, it did have to reload once again, so RAM management does seem to be better here, but the multitasking on the iPhone 7 is still awesome. Uh, it's awesome on the SE and it should be here. Um, most of your apps stay loaded up if you have been using them recently. Okay. Oh, okay. So let's just kind of compare here. This is like ultra buttery smooth, no drop frames whatsoever. Let's, I'll kill myself there. 
Let's try it on here. Oh, we got an ad. Awesome. It's buttery. It's not quite as smooth. I see some drop frames here and there, you know, a little bit of stutter, but nothing that noticeable. And like, there's like an ad here too. So keep that in mind. The ads kind of lag this game. So I would say this is this general little test here does exhibit you know, the the difference in performance, the A12 is a monster, the A10 is kind of like Monster Junior. It's not quite at the level, once again, because Apple, if anything, they innovate in the processor realm. So to wrap things up here, is this phone, the iPhone XS Max, worth that staggering price gap, the extra six to $700? And my answer is no to most people. But if you're a tech guy, I mean, the insane display on this, the insane performance, and the awesome build quality um, might make this phone a compelling purchase to you. But once again, you spend your money the way you want to. If you are purely just looking for a phone that will do your basic menial tasks quickly without too much stutter and lag and whatever, this phone is still very much worth it. So with that, I'm wrapping things up. I hope this video helped you out. If you're trying to decide whether which to buy as of right now or if you should upgrade, personally, I think that if you're one of the many, 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 many average consumers, it really isn't worth your money in most cases. But if you're a tech head like me or if you really care about your technology, um, then I mean, by all means, buy the newest phone. I certainly do and I always will. Um, to my regular viewers, do not worry. I'm still going to be doing my regular content, you know, the cinematic, late reviews and reviews and other videos like that. Um, this is just an addition to what I'll be doing. It's just easier for me to produce this content, especially during a weekend where I'm really busy like this one. I have a lot of school events going on, so I was able to reach out to you guys uh, in this manner. And also, I think it offers a differing perspective. I'm usually more scripted, more planned. This is more of just me sitting down with you, talking about technology without having to think too much, just kind of having more of a conversational type dialogue uh, with you guys about particular devices and whatnot. So please do know that. And uh, yeah, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like in the video, comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one. So let's play a game here. This is the one that I just downloaded. My friend is a weirdo. He doesn't have any games on his phone. He's a fucking weeb. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm going to include that, honestly. <laughs>